Hello everyone, my name is Lydia Danda and my project for this psychology class is about one famous psychologist by the name of Mary Winton Parkins. I chose this psychologist because as a woman in the 1800s paired with education didn't seem to fit at the time. Her journey through education and earning her place in the world of psychology is so inspiring. Here's a little background info about Mary Winton Clarkins. She was born on March 30th, 1863 and died on February 26, 1930. Within her life, she accomplished so much for herself and in the field of psychology. She was raised in Buffalo, New York until the age of 17. Then she moved to Massachusetts where she attended Smith College in 1882. She lived her life without a husband by her side, nor children to pass on her legacy. Calkins hit many bumps in her college education and earning her place in the field of psychology. While at Smith College, she graduated with a bachelor's degree in philosophy in 1885. In 1887, she became a Greek tutor at Weasley College and heard that they were starting a psychology course which she was asked to teach, but she figured to study the subject first. So she, cho she chose to study at Harvard, but at the time, women weren't allowed to study there, only men. Luckily, she got special permission to take psychology classes at Harvard, although wasn't given full admission. She attended her classes as a guest. After a few years, Clarkins returned to Wesley College to teach psychology in 1891, at the same time still study at Harvard, still as a guest and not an actual student. With her professors by her side, she earned her PhD in 1895. Surprisingly, Harvard declined it, given that she was a woman pursuing her education at Harvard and the fact that she wasn't allowed to graduate at any men's college. Clankins gave in a very important lesson, life lesson in which Radcliffe had opened her eyes. In 1902, Radcliffe College, which was an all-women's college, heard about this sexual discrimination and they offered her, after to give her her PhD, but guess what? She declined that offer. She pointed out that Harvard would never accept women if other women colleges like Radcliffe continue to offer us an education. She saw that women deserve the education and degree they want in whatever school they see themselves succeeding at. As I mentioned, men excluded women in just about everything to education and pursuing a career, but Clarkin's accomplishments definitely showed her self-worth within the field of psychology. Here are a number of achievements despite her decline PhD. While teaching at Wellesley College, Clarkin successfully established the first laboratory for the purpose of psychology. She was recognized for her passion within the field, therefore was awarded a very important position that helped her get her name out there. Mary Winton Clarkins was elected first woman president of the American Sociological Association in the year of 1905. That which influences women's rights in education. Later on, she earned her way to becoming a full-time professor at Wellesley. She was also granted two honorary doctorate degrees from Columbia University in 1905 and Smith College in 1910. Then in 1918, she became president of the American Philosophical Philosophical Association, not to mention the first woman to receive honorary Honorable membership in the British Sociological Association in 1982. That was another opportunity for her to fight for women's rights in education.
Hawkins devoted her work and techniques to both philosophy and psychology. Here are her theories and research that contribute to the field of psychology. In her early research, she conducted experiments of associatism, which created the pair associate learning theory. This is very much used today to test the frequency, recency, and clearness on memory. Her participants in the experiment were shown colors paired with numbers. The purpose was to test their memory as to which color went with each number. She found that if shown a series of numbers paired with colors, people are more likely to remember rather than a vivid colored number. Another contribution was the dream theory that took two months to gather 350 dreams of herself and her colleagues. She found that there are close connections to the dream line and the waking line based on the people you know, places you've been, and recent events that had happened. In other words, whatever is realistic can be projected in our dreams. Out of all her works, Harkins was mostly interested in, in the creation of self psychology. In the study of conscious, is the study of conscious organisms. Focusing on the subject of oneself and object and the relationship between the two. Mary Winton Clackens is considered as one of the most important first generation American psychologists. If it wasn't for her dedication and battles, there wouldn't be other women in the field of psychology or women earning their rights to accomplish an education. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I hope you all enjoyed it.